Codex has just been upgraded and here's what's new in Codex. Today we're releasing GPT-5 Codex, a version of GPT-5 further optimized for agentic coding in Codex. And essentially, GPT-5 Codex is a version of GPT-5 further optimized for agentic software engineering in Codex and strained on complex real-world engineering tasks such as building full projects from scratch, adding features and tests, debugging performing large-scale refactors, and conducting code reviews. And it's more steerable, adheres better to agents.md instructions, which means you're going to get more efficient and quality code. Now, here are some of the benchmarks of GPT-5 against GPT-5 Codex. And you can see that with GPT-5, we had 72.8%, but now it jumps to 74.5%. Not a huge leap, but still quite effective. But in the code refactoring task, you can see that it jumped quite a lot, almost 18%. Now, the cool thing about GPT-5 Codex is its ability to adapt. It actually adapts the amount of time spent on thinking more dynamically based on complexity of the task. And then this model combines two essential skills for a coding agent. One is pairing with developers in interactive sessions and persistent independent execution on longer tasks. Now, recently, Rapid released their Agent 3, which according to their claims can run up to 200 minutes on the same task autonomously. But OpenAI just upgraded Codex with a humongously long background run window, which is around seven hours at a time on large and that too independently. And I'm totally hyped about this seven hour duration of background execution. This is really mind blowing. Another cool part about GPT-5 Codex is that it uses 93.7% fewer tokens than GPT-5 and it spends twice as long on reasoning, editing and testing the code. Now, here's some of the other benchmarks. GPT-5 Codex has a low ratio of incorrect comments. And in the benchmarks for high impact comments, it is almost 13% better than GPT-5 high. And on the benchmarks for comments per PR, it's amazingly efficient, I would say, because I don't want my code to contain tons and tons of repetitive useless comments. I just want to the point comments and GPT-5 Codex high makes it possible. Now, I know some of you might be impatient to actually try this out and you might have this question, how can we access Codex? So let me answer that question for you. You can use Codex agent extension into VS Code, Cursor, and other VS Code folks like Windsurf ID and much more. And after you know how to access it, you might have a question on the availability and pricing of this amazing coding agent model. So Codex is included with GPT Plus Pro Business Education and Enterprise Plans, which means other than the free plan, you can use Codex in any other plan. And we're going to be using Codex with the Plus plan right here. And I know it was a lot of theory, but we're finally moving forward to actually showing you how you can access GPT-5 Codex. And we're just going to do some light examples with GPT-5 Codex. So let's get started with the lab part. Hi and welcome back to SkillCup. This is Ahoy Shambrez and we're finally getting started with the lab part. So we're here inside my VS Code and you can see that I have opened up my extension marketplace and search for Codex. Once you search for Codex, you have to go for the one where you see OpenAI labeled and you can install that one. And one more thing here is that you can see the last release. It was just today, a couple of hours ago, which means that this one is the latest extension by OpenAI. Once you install it, you will see that right here. Once you click over here, it's going to ask you to sign in with ChatGPT or use your API key. It's totally up to you if you want to go with sign-in options or if you want to go with your API key. I'm just going to go with my sign-in option with ChatGPT right here. So let's click on sign-in and let's open this up in my browser. So as soon as you do that, you just have to enter your credentials here and sign in with ChatGPT. So once you sign up, you're going to see this window right here where they're going to ask you whether you want to try GPT-5 Codex right now or you want to continue with GPT-5. So I'm just going to go with GPT-5 Codex here. I want to talk about the interface and a few settings here. You can actually connect with the cloud and also connect with Codex Web. Also, you have the ability to chat or plan and then you can switch to agent or you can give the full access to agent. I'm just going to go with the full access. And then you also have an option for your model. So you can go with GPT-5 Codex high, medium, low, 
or you can select any other GPT-5 normal models. I'm just going to go with GPT-5 Codex High. So let's create an agents.md file and I'm just going to go ahead and write my requirements for an application that I want to build using Python. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and create agents.md and in this markdown file, I'm going to paste in all the requirements that I have for my application. I'm going to build an image cropper using Python. So let me dump in my system prompt and my requirement for this application. And then we can start using Codex. So there you go. I have my agents.md with the overview core requirements as well as technology and libraries. Now the next step is to go back to Codex. And here I'm just going to go in and paste in my prompt, which is going to be like use agents.md in this folder whichever is the current folder and then generate the main.py all the core requirements that I have right here. So let's go ahead and actually hit enter. Now, as you can see, it's preparing to inspect agents.md and after exploring these files, it's reading the file content, reading agents.md right here. And after that, it's thinking. Now, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna leave everything to Codex agent. As OpenAI claimed that it can work up to seven hours. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for it to actually finish this and then we can talk about the results. Okay, so there you go. We have the final results and we have a test for it as well as the final Python main.py file. Now, I'm gonna talk about its working process. So you can see that it went through lots of steps but everything was divided into three different steps. First one was planning the UI, then the implementation, and the third one was checking logical sanity. So you can see that it adopted to the file creation of PowerShell as I'm using Windows, and then it ran PowerShell commands to tackle some errors, kept iterating over that, installed the libraries needed, and after running all the tests and everything, it gave us this final result. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check out the main.py. And this is around 543 lines of code, which is quite polished. So let me go ahead and try to run this. I'm just gonna open up my terminal where I can just click here to play this. And as soon as I do that, so we have our application right here, the Codex image cropper. I can upload one image. Let's say I want to upload this image. So now I can go ahead and actually crop the portion that I want to crop. Let's say this is the size that I want to crop, but I just want this bottom part. So I'm just going to go ahead and say crop. And as soon as I click crop, I can go ahead and save this file. So I can save it right here with the name cropped codex. And after that, I can go ahead and reset. So everything goes back to reset. And notice one more thing. Once you hit this cropping portion, you can see that you have a preview of what is being cropped. And this preview is live with this pixel count right here. And I think this is quite a thorough application for cropping. We can zoom in and zoom out as well. Now, I want to check out the results. So I'm just going to go ahead into my file explorer. And you can see this is the cropped image that I saved inside my pictures folder. And you can see the name as well, cropped codex so the cropping part works really well and it did not degrade the quality of the image which is really great so that was a complete smash on this test with codex i would highly encourage you guys to go ahead and try out codex i hope this video is helpful for you to understand and the know-hows of gpt5 codex if you found this video helpful hit that like button share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below ring the notification bell to never miss out on a daily updates thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.